The share price of Palantir Technologies, the data analytics software company, has remained within a relatively narrow trading range over the past seven-month period, despite the fact that Palantir has experienced increased adoption of its artificial intelligence-powered solutions, and there is growing evidence that the company is gaining traction with commercial enterprise customers. This lack of share price movement is not entirely surprising, given that Palantir's valuation increased substantially ahead of the underlying fundamentals and financial performance of the business. Based on recent customer deals announced by Palantir and comments made by management during quarterly earnings calls, I expect that Palantir's revenue growth rate will continue to accelerate going forward. Although it's questionable whether the improved top-line growth will be sufficient to justify Palantir's inflated current market valuation. Regardless, it seems more likely that Palantir's share price will be driven by the hype surrounding artificial intelligence technology and positive investor sentiment towards growth stocks in general, rather than the company's fundamental business performance. There continues to be ongoing debate amongst market analysts regarding the service's heavy nature of Palantir's business model and whether the company can truly be considered a pure enterprise software vendor. This debate is probably more relevant now than ever before given all the hype and excitement currently surrounding artificial intelligence. I have previously discussed my perspective on this issue, suggesting that the labor-intensive services component of Palantir's business is not necessarily problematic. In fact, it could actually represent a competitive advantage for Palantir, as the extensive services required to implement the software creates high switching costs for customers after adopting Palantir's platforms. However, Palantir does have an expanding portfolio of software solutions targeting diverse application areas such as process mining, augmented reality, and agile software delivery. At its core, Palantir operates a data integration and analytics platform that provides actionable insights to customers. Artificial intelligence should serve to increase the value of this platform, but I don't think the adoption of AI fundamentally alters the nature of Palantir's business model or its future prospects. Palantir launched a new offering called Palantir Government Web Services in September 2023, which is designed to help emerging technology companies operationalize and commercialize their software innovations specifically for government sector customers. The first two products offered through GWS are FedStart and Apollo. FedStart provides accreditation services to help technology vendors navigate and accelerate the process of gaining access to sell software to the U.S. federal government and intelligence agencies. Apollo is an autonomous software delivery platform that aims to reduce the complexity burden for technology companies to deliver and deploy modern software systems. These new products represent an attempt by Palantir to open up a new revenue stream leveraging its expertise and capabilities in the government technology arena. Although realistically, I wouldn't expect GWS to become a major revenue contributor for Palantir in the near term. Palantir's artificial intelligence-powered solution called AIP enables organizations to utilize large language models in a secure and controlled manner so they can extract valuable insights from their data and orchestrate connections between tools, user actions, and other AI models. However, there are a variety of technology vendors attempting to offer enterprise customers similar types of AI-powered data analysis functionality and orchestration capabilities, so there doesn't appear to be much differentiation between competing vendor solutions in this area presently. Palantir Management seems to acknowledge this lack of differentiation, stating their belief that the real value is likely to accrue at the application layer and workflow integration layer with vendors that can effectively address skills, shortages amongst customers likely to fare particularly well. It is Palantir's ability to seamlessly embed AI capabilities into its data platform in order to provide actionable insights and enhance user productivity that is likely to drive value creation rather than the underlying artificial intelligence technologies themselves. Palantir is positioning its knowledge ontology as a potential source of competitive differentiation with the claim that this ontology enables large language models to deliver more reliable and trustworthy answers. The extent to which this claim is actually true in practice remains to be definitively proven and demonstrated, but if effective, it could help address one of the biggest concerns and issues with large language models presently. Palantir's AIP solution is already being leveraged by nearly 300 organizations, representing close to two-thirds of Palantir's total customer base, with the number of users on AIP almost tripling during the third quarter alone. In Q3, Palantir shifted its go-to-market focus heavily towards AIP bootcamps, 
which are intensive training workshops aimed at rapidly upskilling customer teams on how to build applications with AIP. Palantir has stated these boot camps are improving financial metrics like payback period and customer lifetime value, accelerating sales cycle times for customer negotiations, and driving expansions of existing customer contracts. However, the tangible financial impact of these AIP boot camps on Palantir's published financial results remains unclear at the present moment. Palantir's commercial customer count in the United States has certainly increased sharply, which is driving the recent reacceleration in total revenue growth. However, the company's net dollar retention rate amongst existing customers remains relatively low. Palantir recently expanded its product offerings with the introduction of a mixed reality service and an immersive command and control application built on top of its mixed reality platform. The mixed reality service leverages the 3D game engine from Unity Technologies to power its functionality, which makes it compatible across a wide range of devices and hardware. While mixed reality applications will likely remain a fairly niche solution, it could help to enable more intuitive visualization and analysis of data for certain specialized use cases. The immersive command and control application provides native integration with several major U.S. Army command and control systems. There was significant interest and customer traction during 2022 for Unity's real-time 3D and digital twin capabilities amongst industrial enterprises. But demand appears to have weakened considerably entering 2023. In 2022, Unity reported over 100% year-over-year revenue growth for its Operate Solutions division, which includes the digital twin solutions, with management stating customer demand was actually exceeding Unity's ability to deliver services. More recently, Unity has turned to partners like Booz Allen to begin providing professional services to make the digital twin business more scalable, suggesting there is meaningful demand for real-time 3D use cases in sectors like government, defense, and national security. Palantir's total revenue grew 17% year-over-year to reach $558 million in the third quarter of 2022. Excluding the headwinds from loss of certain strategic commercial contracts, Q3 revenue increased 21% compared to the prior year. In Q3, commercial revenue expanded by 23% year-over-year, outpacing the 12% year-over-year growth rate for government sector revenue. The strong commercial revenue growth was primarily driven by new customer additions in the United States market. Palantir's international commercial business continues to gradually expand, but market conditions remain challenging in continental Europe presently. The U.S. government business was an area of relative weakness in Q3. However, Palantir expects growth to reaccelerate despite ongoing budgetary uncertainty in the near-term government spending environment. For the fourth quarter, Palantir has forecast total revenue in the range of $599 million to $603 million, representing roughly 18% year-over-year growth if achieved. While Palantir's revenue growth rate has only accelerated modestly thus far, there are more positive indicators emerging relating to customer deals and contract bookings. Total contract value booked in Q3 reached $830 million, up 29% sequentially versus the prior quarter. The number of customer deals closed for Palantir's U.S. commercial business in Q3 increased by 140% compared to the same period last year. Palantir management has suggested they are seeing a noticeable acceleration in larger deal sizes and shorter sales cycles times to close new customers and expand contracts with existing customers. Palantir's total global customer count increased 34% year-over-year in the third quarter, with new customer growth increasingly being driven by additions to the commercial business segment. However, Palantir's net dollar revenue retention rate was only 107% in Q3, which management attributed to weakness in the commercial segment in continental Europe. Revenue expansion within Palantir's largest enterprise customers remains robust as total revenue over the trailing 12 months from Palantir's top 20 customers increased 13% year-over-year. Palantir is now consistently profitable on a gap net income basis and generating healthy free cash flow. The company's financial margins continue to gradually improve with increased scale in a predictable manner. While I believe Palantir will eventually become a very profitable technology vendor as the business matures, the heavy usage of stock-based compensation is a negative factor weighing on gap profitability currently. The high stock-based compensation will likely decline significantly over time as a percentage of revenue, so it should become less of an issue.
However, investors bullish on Palantir stock need to keep in mind that a dramatic further increase in the share price would make stock-based compensation vastly more expensive than what is shown on the income statement. While there are several positive indicators suggesting Palantir's growth rate is accelerating, the company's job posting data does not point towards expectations for a dramatic growth surge. The most generous interpretation of the job posting data is that Palantir's AIP bootcamps and AI product capabilities are making the business more scalable, reducing the incremental sales headcount required to facilitate growth. A more cautious interpretation would be that Palantir is still not fully confident that the recent acceleration in growth will prove sustainable over the long term. It's also possible that Palantir is still ramping up and growing into the significant increase in headcount from new hires in 2021 and 2022. If you look past the hype around artificial intelligence, there are aspects of Palantir's business model and competitive positioning that I view favorably. As the company scales, Palantir should become highly profitable given its software-centric revenue model and its data platform offerings are likely to have very high customer switching costs once implemented. Palantir also has an impressive track record of consistently landing extremely large enterprise-wide software contracts with government agencies and Fortune 500 customers, which many technology vendors struggle to achieve. As a result, I believe Palantir's stock should deliver reasonable returns for long-term investors, even if the current valuation appears stretched. However, the stock is likely to experience volatility in the near term as hype cycles inevitably oscillate between periods of irrational exuberance and pessimism before expectations normalizing to reflect underlying fundamentals over the long run.